Hi, Steven here from Tor Electronics. I'm here today to talk to you about CircuitPython for the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. CircuitPython is a cool new language based on Python that's built specifically for microcontrollers. And some of the great things about CircuitPython is it doesn't need an editor like most programming languages. You don't need to compile the code. Everything's super simple. You can program with just a board and a text editor on your computer and away you go. So today we're gonna learn how to load CircuitPython onto your Circuit Playground Express and make a simple code that allows you, your lights to light up on the board with a press of the two onboard buttons. Now the first thing that you need to do in order to use Circuit Python on your Circuit Playground Express is to download a UF2 file, which is like the program file or firmware for your for your board. On our Introducing Circuit Python tutorial page, we have a link to the latest Circuit Python UF2, and that will take you to Adafruit's website, and they have the most current link to the CircuitPython UF2, the latest stable version. So download that. And the next step is to update the libraries on your Circuit Playground Express. Most Circuit Playground Expresses ship with libraries, but it's always good to update them. The libraries that come on the board aren't the complete suite of libraries, and it is really important to make your code work. So the link for the latest stable release of the library bundle is also available in this tutorial. It will take you to the Adafruit Circuit Python homepage, where the link to the latest Adafruit Circuit Python library bundle release is. So the first step to putting the to putting our UF2 file onto our Circuit Playground Express is to enter bootloader mode. So we double press on the reset button in the middle of the board. Notice we have a circle of green lights. That means that we're connected properly. So once we double press on the reset buttons and the lights have turned green, we can go to our this PC or my computer, depending on the Windows version you have, and see we have a device and drive called C Play Boot. Now our in our downloads folder, we have the latest Adafruit Circuit Playground Circuit Python UF2 file, and we just drag that into our C Play Boot. And now it's loaded on the board, and the drive changes to Circuit Python. So we can see it there: devices and drive, Circuit Pi. Then that's the drive of the board itself. And we can open that up and see all the files that are on it currently. Now, this is our library bundle that we downloaded as well. It comes as a zip, so you'll need to extract it. And once it's extracted, there'll be a library folder in it. And in that library folder is all these library files that you can use while you're programming in CircuitPython. On your Circuit Playground Express drive, there is a library folder as well. If there's not a library folder, just create your own, title it all lowercase lib and put your libraries in there. It'll work just fine. So we already have our libraries updated on this board, but if you didn't, you can just select everything, drag it over and copy it into the library folder of your drive and replace anything that's already there, since this will all be the latest version. On other boards, you might need to be careful and pick and choose which libraries you include because there's not enough storage, but in the Circuit Playground Express, there's two megabytes of storage and there's more than enough room to stick all these libraries and other files that you need without running out of space. So we'll just drag them all and not worry about the things that we're not going to use. 
So now we have our libraries installed on the Circuit Playground Express. We have our UF2 file loaded, so we're ready to code. A word about editors for CircuitPython. You don't necessarily need an editor. You can just use a regular text editor like Notepad if you want. You don't need to compile your code. You just need to toggle your file main.py and drop it into your Circuit Playground Express drive. However, we use the editor mu, which is mu, and it's a great editor. It's made to interface with the Circuit Playground Express specifically, and it has a built-in serial monitor, which is really nice when it comes to troubleshooting a mistake in your code. So if we open up mu, this is the basic interface for mu. It's a free program you can download. And the first step to editing some code is to hit load. And it will, if your Circuit Playground Express is connected to the computer, it will automatically open up that drive. And if not, you can just navigate to it and open main.py. And this is where your code lives on the Circuit Playground Express. Um, whatever you Whatever code you make, it needs to be titled main.py in order for the board to recognize it and know that that's what it needs to run. So we have, have here the code for the button press already loaded onto it. And we'll just I'll just give you a quick run through of what's going on. Um, at the top of every code in CircuitPython, we have our import libraries. So we, first of all, import a library for the Circuit Playground Express or CPX. And this says from and then import, and that's because the CPX library is in a folder. So, and this is the only one really that's in a folder that you'll need to use regularly. So just the from out of fruit Circuit Playground Express is the folder and then import the library, and then we import the NeoPixel library so we can use the, the NeoPixels on the board, and we import board so we can interface with the buttons on the board. The next chunk of code we have here uh, sets up our NeoPixels. So it just defines the pixels on the board, identifies that there's 10 of them, sets the brightness, and this is one being full bright and decimal points smaller being less bright. And we don't really see brightness linearly, so um, setting it to 0.5 doesn't make it seem half as bright. It seems a little more than that, So, but it drops off the lower you get it. And we have auto write to false. And this is a command for NeoPixels. CircuitPython will send the data to the NeoPixel, every line that has something related to NeoPixels. And we want it to wait till it gets to the bottom of the section before it sends that data out, just to keep our code running smoothly. It wouldn't be much of an issue on a simple code like this, but on a really big program, it could really bog it down. So we have returned auto write to false. And when you do auto write false, you need to have a pixel.show command in order to send that data to the pixels. So also here we have a pixels fill to turn all the pixels off. And then this show sends that data to the pixels. In our main body of the code in our while true loop, we have two if statements. And this is one of the ways that CircuitPython really makes coding simpler and easier is that normally you'd have to have a little bit more of a statement here with your, with your within your if, but for in CircuitPython, we just need to say if and then include the button and then the if true part is um, assumed basically. So if the CPX button B is true, so if that's pressed, then it will run the code that's in this hanging indent. And CircuitPython organizes all its code by indents, which is something that's just more of, um, just a more way to keep organized and normal code. This is um, 
in CircuitPython, it's how it actually knows what's within that if statement. So no curly Q brackets needed, just in hanging indent. So if the circuit playground express button B is pressed, then we'll print a button B is pressed statement into the serial monitor. And then we'll set, we'll set pixel zero through four to be red. So the 255, the values can be between zero and 255 for RGB. So we have red set to 255 in all these NeoPixels. And just a reminder that the pixels on the board start from zero, zero at the USB port and go counterclockwise up to nine for 10 total. Um, and then we have the if statement for button A, which is the same CPX dot button A. We'll send a text string to the serial monitor that button A is pressed and we'll light up the five lights on the other side of the board blue. And then at the end of our if statements, we have pixel show. So this is when the data that we've set our pixels to is sent to the NeoPixels and then a fill to send send them back to zero if the buttons aren't pressed anymore. So just to give a demonstration with the serial monitor, REPL is the serial monitor. We'll hit uh, control D to reload it. And as you can see, when we hit the A button, we have button A is pressed appear once for every time the code loops through and the same thing for button B. And if I'm pushing them both, they both both show up. And in order to put it onto the board, we just hit save. Now the main.py is saved directly to the drive and any changes we've made to the code are now on the board already. It automatically reboots. It only takes a few seconds and you're back to testing again. So if you're this makes, this makes prototyping or trying new things in your code really quick because you can make a change, change the code. Say we want to set the brightness to half. We hit save and then it reboots and now our brightness is at half already. And maybe half isn't enough so we wanted it 0.1. Hit save again and then as you can see the lights are substantially dimmer. So that concludes our overview of CircuitPython for the Circuit Playground Express. Check out our tutorial section for more tutorials on the Circuit Playground Express, CircuitPython, and other ways to program with the Circuit Playground Express like MakeCode. And thanks for watching.